Guanxi tells me that you know your family history back to 16th century? Oh, well, the, the, uh, in one line, you know how, how often it's just one line that you know, and up to uh, 10 something. And that was Harold the Black uh, from the Isle of Man. And, uh, and uh, his son was Gori Hrovan, and he came up to, to Scotland. And, and there's uh, a lovely song that we sing about Gori Hrovan in his, in his uh, rowing boat um, with all his men on it. And my brother and I, when we go home, when I go home, we sing that song. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that was the, uh, the MacLeods, um, Melina MacLeod, and that's the MacLeod line comes down. And it's all fellows, you know, it's all men, 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 until about the um, seven, middle of the 1700s. And then the women start getting introduced. And uh, that particular line, uh, they, they've been in the Isle of Lewis for centuries really and um, in the middle of the eight, well early 1800s and middle of the 1800s uh, Scotland had been taken over by England. The last battle was the Battle of Culloden in the late 1700s. Scotland lost and so uh, Great Britain was England owned Scotland so they, they um, the, yeah, that was the last time we fought to try and make Scotland <laughs> independent at that time. Anyhow, um, when the um, English were thinking, how, what are we going to do with this high, wild highlands and islands? They might, it might be good for sheep, really, you know, we could make some money out of sheep if we had sheep up there and there's nice bits of land that the people have really um, made good by putting seaweed on it round the seashores and nice bits of green land where they put their sheep, the village people. So um, they worked out that if they could uh, get rid of these savages up north <laughs> the islands and islands, that it would be a good thing. So they started uh, making the, the um, crofters pay rent. Well, who had money to pay rent? Very few, you know, there'd have been some people had a little bit of money from going fishing or from doing, doing being builders or making uh, barrels for herring or something. There'd be a few jobs around, but not very much. So people generally couldn't pay the rent. And so the people were thrown off the land. So that was called the Highland Clearances. The Highland and Island Clearances. And my MacLeod people were, um, lived in a lovely spot in part of the island nice and green and they got thrown off because they couldn't pay the rent so uh, lots of families went to Canada to Nova Scotia New Scotland to even down to Terra del Fuego and America and, and New Zealand and Australia there was boats waiting for people to take the people away to foreign lands and uh, told that there was, there was, um, yeah, that they would be, they would be able to survive. There, lots of people died, of course, just from, from, um, just in the cold in Canada. They had terrible. Some people had terrible time there. Anyhow, um, so my people who were told time to go, they. It took them, I think, a year and a half to come to where I was born and brought up on the island, the Isle of Lewis and the Outer Hebrides of Scotland, the most northwesterly island of Scotland. And uh, they stayed with relatives halfway. And, and my f grandfather was two at, the, at that time. Of course, they had to walk over the moors. And, 
and my great auntie was six and when we were young we used to because Harris Tweed if you've ever heard of Harris Tweed it's made on our island that's the only place in the world it's made Lewis and Harris is really one island but um, so that's the only place it's made and uh, there was always spare wool from the Harris Tweed making and and um, the weavers used to give my mother um, the leftover bobbins of wool and that's how we always made jumpers and made rugs and, and um, so uh, we used to have to twist two, two uh, strands of wool together to make it thick enough to knit so, and there'd be, there was this spinning wheel and every time we took a day to spin more wool, we'd get told, well, it was your great auntie who brought that on her back, which was six. That was her job, to, to carry this spinning wheel from, from where uh, the people, her people had been thrown off to the new home. And we still had that spinning wheel, so it was just lovely to use. And it was a lump of butter you put on the on the on the moving part because we didn't have oil. <laughs> so and a lump of butter would be put on so that it would be nice and smooth. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so uh, the place where they settled, where I was born, there was I think the government uh, or must have been the government, gave a bit of land, made lots um, of uh, land in this village that grew, that I was brought up in. And so people were given this piece of land that was just um, moorland, you know, heather and, and peat bogs. And so it took them a long time to get the peat off the land so that they could grow anything because you can't grow crops in peat. So they were very poor for a long time and they had to of course build a house and the houses that they built were uh, stone houses, very thick walls, low stone houses with with uh, thatch on the roof and uh, that's where my, my father was born in a black, they were called black houses, my father was born in a black house and um, that was his home until he was 20 when he built a house, he and his brother built a house for his mother and father before my father and his brother came to Australia to look for work but my father only stayed here for 10 years and then he went back back home. So um, the houses had a fire in the middle of the floor and when you went to, there were still four or five houses like that in our village of 28 houses, four or five houses still with black houses. So when you went up to the door, you'd see the smoke coming out of the door and you'd, you'd look and you'd say, anybody home? <laughs> and, yes, yes, come in here. <laughs> and then you'd gradually, you'd say who you were and of course, your name was you and your father and your grandfather, that's how you, how you said your name. And so I'm Melina A.B. Murdo and then my great-grandfather Donald Murdo. Melina A.B. Murdo, Donald Murdo is my name in Gaelic. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, um, yeah, you'd see first of all the fire and then you'd see maybe a cat and a dog and, and then you'd see the dishes glinting on the on the Welsh kind of dresser that they had where people had fancy dishes that they brought home from the fishing from when they went down to England to gut herring the women would bring home a nice dish or something <laughs> they'd be up on the on the dresser and then you'd see the woman of the house and the men would usually be out working or depending on the weather of course and then you'd gradually your eyes would get accustomed to the light and you could almost see everything. <laughs> There'd be a little bit of, um, of, gla of uh, glass in the thatch, a few little bits of glass in the thatch, that's where the light came in. 
And uh, they were so cosy, these houses. There was just one bedroom, one room uh, with, with curtains along the front of the little nooks that had the beds in it. And then in the main part of the house, there was probably another bed if there was a granny and a grandpa or whoever, if they could get a bed in there, there'd be a bench to sit at and maybe a stool and a table. They were, they, they, you couldn't get lost when you went in, you knew where to sit and everything, you knew where things were. And then at the lower end of the house, in the middle, as you went in the door, that was usually where the hens were. And in the lower part of the house, because the house was on a slight slope down the hill, uh, there'd be the cows. And of course, that's it was good that the cows were down the bottom of the slope because <laughs> all the, the manure and everything went down, <laughs> down the hill. And, oh, they were just very, as, as my auntie had one, uh, a black house. And, they were very, very cosy, but they weren't thought of, they were thought of as being very backward to have one of these houses. And I remember when I was in high school, I stayed in hostel because the, my home was 13 miles from school. So <laughs> there was no bus, daily buses. So all the kids from a part of the island had to stay in hostel for the week and then we got home at weekends. And there was, there was a girl in the hostel who lived in a black house still and her clothes smelt of, of smoke, of yeah, smoky suit. And I used to feel so sorry for her because um, she was, there was a stigma attached to still living in a black house. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was very sad, yeah.